I'm not new to the paper industry. In fact, I'm the third generation. My family started a newsprint recycling business in 1925. In 1989, we put that experience to good use in setting up a pilot program to recycle cartons in Cincinnati public schools. Today, over 50 schools participate, and more are being added each month. In addition to schools, we're collecting cartons from senior citizens' communities and nursing homes. The Cincinnati pilot project has been very encouraging. It's received strong support from city officials, school boards, administrators, and teachers. It's helped students learn the value of recycling. And by keeping cartons out of the trash, we've kept them from further clogging the city's landfills. The Cincinnati program is just the beginning. You've seen the brief presentation we're using to educate consumers about carton recycling. As soon as we find additional buyers for our carton pulp, we're ready to expand this recycling program to other cities. American companies are becoming more conscious of the need to use recycled paper. Consumers tuned into the environment expect to see more recycled content in the paper products they buy and the printed materials they read. Gradually, that demand is being met. Paper mills are using more recycled fibers in the pulp they make. In turn, high-volume paper buyers are asking for more and better quality recycled stock. Most recycled paper is a mixture of two kinds of waste paper. Pre-consumer recycled paper is made up of industrial scraps and paper left over after printing and trimming. Because it never reached the consumer, it is relatively clean and easy to collect. Post-consumer recycled paper comes from homes, offices, schools, stores, wherever paper has been used and discarded. This is the paper that poses major problems for our environment, because most of it ends up buried deep inside landfills where it can't easily decompose. In order to recycle it, it must first be carefully sorted by grade, a time-consuming and expensive process. Since most post-consumer paper is covered with printing and colored inks, strong chemicals are needed to take the ink off and bleach it to restore its brightness. That process can weaken and shorten the paper fibers. To give recycled paper the strength and brightness paper buyers require, most recycled paper made today has a high pre-consumer content and low post-consumer content. If we're going to reduce the paper load going into our landfills, the percentage of post-consumer fiber in recycled pulp will need to be much higher. McDonald's takes recycling very seriously, both in our own recycling efforts and in the purchase of recycled materials. Without an end user, without someone to buy recycled materials, recycling can't work. There has to be a demand for it in order for it to succeed. Our goal in purchasing recycled materials is basically landfill avoidance. Anything that heads toward the landfill basically can be reused in some productive way, and paper's no exception. The more we can save paper from heading toward the landfill and putting it to use again in papers that we use in our restaurants, the better. It's precious resources that need saving. The process for recycling cartons into high-quality post-consumer pulp is quite simple. Once cartons are shredded and disinfected, they are mixed with water. The polyethylene covering the paperboard is strained out and saved for reuse in manufacturing plastics. Almost all of the inks printed on the carton stock are washed away with the polyethylene coating. Because the process is clean and chemical-free, Fibers in carton pulp retain their strength and stiffness to a greater degree than fibers in post-consumer pulp made from other sources. Pulp made from recycled cartons is generally mixed with pulp made from pre-consumer waste paper to make a variety of papers and paperboard products, ranging from tissues and paper towels to fine writing and printing papers. Mixing of pre- and post-consumer pulp can be done at the pulp mill or after it reaches the paper mill. If you look closely at recycled paper, you may see some tiny blemishes here and there. It may not look as bright as high-quality paper made from virgin pulp. For that reason, many buyers of printing and writing papers have found recycled stock didn't meet their high standards. But that's changing. Recycled paper is becoming a badge of honor, 
a visible sign a company is taking positive environmental action. Really what has happened is that the customer that over the last 12 months was concerned about finding a, re a recycled sheet of paper in the last six months has now turned that concern towards a higher percentage of post-consumer waste in the recycled sheet. Our customers not only come to us looking for a recycled sheet of paper, uh, but are looking for a recycled sheet of paper with, with as much post-consumer waste that we can find uh, in the paper itself, uh, and a story that they can tell uh, to their consumer base on how they have participated in a program of taking post-consumer waste, recycling it into post-consumer pulp, and then into paper, and then recycled on a printed project. Um, you know, and I think, think what the uh, uh, Ohio Pulp Mill is doing, at least for us, in this pilot project, is giving us a way of telling that story and sharing it with our customer base. Buyers say that a blend of pre-consumer and post-consumer recycled carton stock produces fibers that are close to the quality of virgin pulp. But in this case, the pulp is made from used cartons, cartons that won't need to be collected by municipal garbage trucks and won't be buried in overflowing municipal landfills. The process for turning used cartons into high-quality pulp doesn't create more environmental problems than it solves. Water is unheated. All of it is conserved and recirculated. There are no strong chemicals or bleaches to add or dispose of. The amount of filtered residue being thrown away is small. In short, carton recycling helps the environment without hurting it in the process. The paper industry has set a goal to recover and recycle 40% of the paper used in this country by 1995. We only recycle 25% now, so we have a long way to go. Recycling milk and juice cartons may seem like a very small step as we climb that mountain, but it's a very important step because it helps kids learn what recycling is all about. And it helps us get used to sorting and saving our waste paper, something we are all going to need to do a lot more of. Today, in the Cincinnati area, the schools and institutions are generating enough post-consumer waste to produce 200 tons per month of pulp. As more schools and institutions come aboard from other cities, we can produce 200 tons a day. Making paper that we can use out of curtains that have already been used makes more sense to me than making more landfills.